How does more staff working from home affect a business directly? Does it make it less productive, less effective? Well, the, <laughs> there's no simple answer to that. It's down to individual circumstances, individual jobs and individual uh, 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 job styles. You know, there's no doubt whatsoever that a productive office environment is the best environment for most people. It's a social environment where people get uh, a fulfillment of uh, interaction with other human beings on a face-to-face -face basis, and it, it, it enables creativity and instantaneous responses and instantaneous uh, work uh, objectives. Working from home really removes a lot of that, but also it removes the travel to and from the office, and for some people, uh, working from home, if they've got an office at home and they've got a quiet environment and not kids and dogs dogs running around, may work perfectly well. So I think the simple answer is there is room for both types of working uh, mm. in, in any office environment. So what then do you make of what Boris Johnson uh, told us last night that uh, hospitality industry needs to pretty much close down at 10 o'clock? Um, and where we can, we need to go back to working from home. Do you support those two measures? Well, I, I think that's talking about minor tactics. I mean, it's not minor, the effect it has on people, of course, but it's talking about minor tactics rather than strategy. And for the last six months, I've said exactly the same thing. The first thing is that are we actually handling this uh, pandemic crisis correctly? And I still question that equally uh, vociferously. I'm not saying that we are handling it wrongly, but I question whether we are. The reason being is that because in April we had 18% death to case ratio, and it was absolutely right to lock down the country because old people vulnerable were vulnerable and ill people were vulnerable, and we didn't really know what we were doing. So a lockdown then was absolutely the right thing. But I, I said at the time, the lockdown should only be used as a measure to get this virus under control while we found out who we needed to protect and then put protection measures in place to make certain that those people were, were not victims of this virus. I still feel exactly the same now. So are we doing the right thing in locking healthy people down who will not be affected by the virus, uh, many of which will only be asymptomatic, um, some of the ones that are not asymptomatic may suffer some, um, some degree of illness, but very, very few, if any of those, will die, whereas the old and the vulnerable and the medically vulnerable are, are, uh, do really need protecting. Now, if you look at the risks of, um, of a non-lockdown, yes, there, there could be a lot, lot more cases, but will the percentage deaths go up? And we are running at the moment 0.4% of uh, deaths to cases. And that is not a high number compared to lots of other illnesses, including flu. It's been widely reported that the flu virus is killing way more people than COVID is at the moment. Now, I'm not sure that the statistics on this that anybody knows for sure. But right. the very fact that it can be stated um, does give credibility to the fact that uh, the COVID virus is nowhere near as deadly as it was and the fact that it's not uh, killing people at the same rate and the same rate may be even as flu. Right. Um, as you know, uh, the, the medical advisors have said that if we continue, we're going to possibly be at 50,000 cases um, by mid um, October and I appreciate your point is that we might have a lot of cases but the death rate might not be as high as it was back in April. Is it for you then second time around more of a question of if not as many people are dying as were the first time around do we have to take take some of this so to speak um, to to accept a certain level of death so that the economy uh, is not decimated? Well, you know, it's not just the economy. This is not the lives or the economy. This is lives or lives. Because in shutting everything down, what we do is we make people uh, with cancer, heart attacks, so it's way more vulnerable because they're not getting attended to in hospitals. And my big fear is that in the lock, doing the lockdown now and, and at the end of the last lockdown, 
But what we're doing is shutting down society in such a way that the cumulative deaths, when we have the final death score, and we add together suicides, depressions, cancer victims, strokes, heart attacks, and all the many other illnesses that have not been properly attended to in the last six months, mm. when we add all those together, it will be a catastrophe. Now, the 18% in April... It was indisputable. We had to lock down regardless of the consequences to society because it was clear that the old and the vulnerable but were being sort of decimated by this. So we had to do something about it. We did it. We got it under control. And now we're down to 0.4% death rate. If we carry on in lockdown methods, methodologies where people are not getting treated for all of those other illnesses, not getting treated properly because, mm. the, because the UK is not running properly. We are in danger that the total sum deaths are going to be far worse and we've destroyed the economy. And that was the other forecast that I've made all the way through. And I've never changed my mind on this, which is that the UK economy is going to be decimated by that there's going to be um, millions of people out of work. And I did change my forecast from two to three million to three to four million, which is my latest forecast, three to four million out of work. Imagine the misery that that's going to cause yes. to people. I mean, it's people's lives, people's livelihoods. It's going to cause untold misery, depression and suicides. And that's not to mention the uh, number of businesses that are going to go out of business. Well, so get make no mistake. This is a really, really serious, serious affair on the other hand. And so I really do think the methodology should be looked at. And I do feel the government and the medical advisors within the government are just on a single one-track path. And I don't know what they're looking at behind the scenes, of course, because none of us are privy to that. But uh, from my point of view, there is absolute imperative that the medical professionals look at this, uh, the way we're handling this virus, and say, is there an alternative way? Right. Um, on the subject of businesses, just finally, um, obviously uh, certain nighttime industries are being severely curtailed um, and they're having to close at 10 o'clock. Uh, many nightclubs have, have never reopened. Um, what about uh, continuing with that, but giving more support, uh, the government giving more support to those businesses? For example, extending the furlough scheme, which is going to run out at the end of October. Is that something that you would, that you would support? Well, let, let, me, let me tell you what I said right at the beginning when I lobbied the government. This is before the virus had even got properly hold. I said to the government, what, what you really need to do is to protect every business, every employee, as if this virus had not happened. And you need to look at ways that you can do that. Now, by and large, the have had a good stab at that. It's a very complex uh, uh, objective to achieve, and they have had a go at that. I haven't agreed with everything that they've done. I think they've uh, done a huge amount to uh, save jobs and save businesses, and, uh, and, and that's all very, very good. But uh, it certainly needs to continue for certain industries and certain uh, employees, uh, albeit there is a danger that what we're doing is paying furlough to people that are without doubt going to be made redundant when furlough ends anyway. Mm. So it's another difficult balance because they're using uh, taxpayers' money and they need to use it shrewdly and wisely. So my, my, my thoughts on that were always that there should have never been 80% payment. It should have been less. And, uh, but it shouldn't have been limited to October because clearly this virus is going to carry on causing grief and hardship. Uh, in various industries. Right, let me finally ask you about Boris Johnson, uh, the Prime Minister, because in the run-up to the last general election, you donated uh, half a million pounds to the Conservative Party, and I'm wondering uh, whether you feel that money was, was well spent. Has Boris Johnson's uh, premiership lived up to your expectations? Has he delivered? I mean, clearly these are difficult times, but has he, has he done a good enough job? Well, I dread to think what would have happened if the Labour Party, as it was then under Corbyn and McDonnell, had got in. I think, uh, I think it would have been a fiasco, a long-term fiasco. And I don't believe that they would have handled this crisis any better. For me, a testimony to uh, Boris Johnson's leadership is, is not necessarily how he's performed to, to date, because I think any prime minister would have been under massive duress under these situations and these constant changes and challenges. But for me, the measure of his leadership is whether he employs my Cordwell Pandemic Recovery Plan, which I call CPR, which is vital for the UK economy for the next 10 years. 
if he visualizes what I'm saying, which is that the economy needs massive investment on it, we just need to borrow a lot, lot more money, invest in the environment in four major areas. One is infrastructure, which is railroad, hospitals, schools, housing, and fiber optic. Two is massive apprenticeship schemes that are world-class, that will put all these young people back to work because there will be a million-plus young people out of work at the end of this. We desperately need to get those young people back into work and being trained to be useful members of the job society for the future. And then on top of that, we need, uh, or I'm advocating, a renewable energy city which would really concentrate businesses into that area that are all renewable energy led and develop an industry where we have huge expertise that we can export all around the world, not only our technical knowledge, but also our products, and at the same time help save the planet. Mm. And then finally, a really massive um, campaign to attract businesses onto our shores to, uh, to set up in the UK and to have their either their headquarters or at least their manufacturing plants in various parts of the UK. If he does all that, in four or five years' time, he will go down as a great prime minister. If he doesn't do that, I'm afraid of the last six months and the difficulty in managing this uh, coronavirus may uh, leave him very good with all that. Okay, John, thank you very much.